National Curling Club Playdowns. Our next match will be Team Eli playing Team Bercheski. They're still finishing up their practice. We will start the game in approximately eight minutes.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen out there on the internet land, welcome to the Potomac Curling Club and the Grand National Curling Club's Playdowns. This is the women's draw. Lead Ivy for Team Bracheski throwing the first rock. Team Eli won the draw to the button. Misses the front rock, but manages to hit the back rock and stick two in the house. Hit and stick, essentially. Ooh, flashes the rock, just misses the bump back.
That rock is out of play, folks, so there is nothing in the house. Fascinating shot choice. Percheski's going to try and freeze onto the rock that's out of the house and stay in the house. She manages to bump it, but it's not really aligned well, folks. That rock is still easily take audible. And Eli is trying to match the freeze. Doesn't quite come down to it, folks. My guess is Jenna Brzezinski. Excuse me. My guess is Jenna Brzezinski's gonna come right down and freeze onto that red, try and force Eli to take one. Team Ely here with a chance for two. If she can hit and stick on that r yellow rock. Oh, it needs to keep curling. Oh, there it is. Hit and roll just a little. And Team Ely takes two with the hammer in the first end. While we have a moment, let's take it the lineup for Team Ely. Team Ely actually not playing the traditional lineup with Rebecca throwing lead, Abigail throwing second, Hannah, their skip, throws third rocks, and Emily, the vice, throws the last two. For Team Bercheski, they have a traditional lineup with Ivy throwing lead, Lily throwing second, Elizabeth as the vice, and Jenna, of course, throwing skip.
If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send them to us on Twitter at CurlDC or type into the chat box here on our live stream. Looks a little heavy, folks. Brzezewski's able to sweep it out the back of the house. Ely attempts to sweep that out the, out the back of the house. It was on the same line as her rock, but Burcheski's team threw it just light enough to stick in the back 12.
for those of you interested, on sheet C, we have Rain Anderson playing Sarah Anderson. And in the first end, Sarah Anderson took four with the hammer. Ely going for the double and gets the back one, but manages to push yellow behind some guards, although the hole is about a two rocks wide. You might, no you might notice this broadcast is, is a little quieter than the last one. That's because we have ten men's teams playing in the men's junior playdowns. We have five women's teams playing in the junior playdowns. So there's not as nearly as many people here in the warm room. This is a rocket coming down the ice. Just ticks the guard, and it causes it to miss the back rock. Excellent bump there, closing down the hole a little bit and putting a second rock in the house. Excellent hit and roll by Ely's team. 
taking out Bercheski's rock and leaving her own in the house. I'm not sure I would have left that rock hanging quite that high and outside. I might have tried to sweep it a little further back because now Team Ely can hit and roll. And if they come with enough weight, they could double it. Skip Percheski's checking the angles now. Correction. <laughs> that would be Skip Ely. Couldn't quite sweep that rock out, but maybe it was enough to make it fourth instead of third. Our overhead cam says two. We'll see what they post on the scoreboard. We will hold off posting the score of that second end until we have confirmation of exactly what the score was. But we do know that Team Brzezki scored, so Team Ellie now has the hammer. Nice, tight center guard. Team Ely opting to draw in.
The score for the second end has been hung, and we now have a tie game, 2-2. Two to two. Rebecca throws it a little hard, and it winds up going through the house. The weight's just about right. Probably didn't curl as much as Bercheski would have liked, but you know what? It's a rock in the house. Ellie's taking a look at the angles, and I think she's calling for the double. She definitely wants that, or she might be calling for the guard. We'll see how much weight her teammate throws. That is not a guard, folks. That's a hit. It's hit just on the right-hand side, but only gets the one, but gets too much of a roll. And her own rock. Well, from this angle is covered, I think the players will see that, see a lot of that rock in the hack. We have a score update on sheet C as we watch Abigail throw her second rock. Over on sheet C, Sarah Anderson's team stole two in the second end. They are now leading six to zero.
we'll take a look at the house right after this shot. From this angle, it looks like Ely has both first and second shot, with Prochesky sitting third in the top 12. Once again, Hannah Ely, skip for the team, throws third rocks. And as you can see from the overhead cam, Team Ely is now sitting one, two, three rocks with Team Brzeski sitting one in the 12 foot as fourth shot. But I don't think that's going to last long. Brzeski with a nice normal weight takeout. Hits the top one. Not very thick, so she just kind of pushed it behind the guard and into the forefoot. Yikes. Looks like Hannah Ely's going to try and guard up the hole. Since Ely has hammer, she is sitting in a powerful position right now. It's a little deep. It's going to be well past the T-line. Chesky sweeps it. We'll see see if she swept it out enough so that Ely's only counting three. That's close, but it looks like Brzeski is fourth shot right now. So red would be first, second, third, and fifth shot. It's got a scooter on the guard. Oh, it just clips the guard. Heads right for third shot and nestles up just parallel to it. So Team Mealy with a decision to make. Do they go for the guard or do they take out Prochesky's Rock? With that ice, looks like they're going for the guard. Might be a little heavy. Oh, nope. I'm wrong, folks. That is beautiful weight and beautiful line. An excellent guard.
if we take a look at the overhead cam, you can see that Team Ely the red with the Red Rocks is sitting first and second shot behind the guards. Team Brzezinski in yellow has third shot. Ely is fourth shot, Brzezinski's fifth, and yes, there are six rocks in the house with that back red in the 12 foot. Jenna's last rock for the end. She's clearly trying to take some stuff out. And if she hits it just right, fantastic shot. She left her own rock exposed, but she did take out Ely's second shot rock. And Brzezinski is now sitting second and third, which means Ely can't get them both out. Unless some magic happens. But you know, in curling, that can happen. So it looks like Ely is call calling for the hit and sit. She can even roll just a little bit and still count second shot to take two in the third end. Emily Walker with Team Ely's Hammer. Well, they're really sweeping it. I think it's going to crash on the guard. And it doesn't spill out. Team Ely will take one in the third end. Brzezinski really came back at the end with their last couple of rocks to secure making sure that Ely didn't get a huge end. At one point, Ely was sitting three or four. So as we move on to the fourth end, we have a score update on sheet C. Sarah Anderson's team has again stolen. They stole two in the third end. The score is now eight to zero. And over here back on sheet B, we can pull up our scoreboard and show you that Team Ely started with a hammer and so far, Hammer has scored every end. Ely with two in the first, Brzezinski with two in the second, and Ely with one in the third. Ely going for a center guard, leaves it kind of high, maybe a two guard, very close to this doubles marker. Winds up a little heavy, and Hannah Ely sweeps it to the back of the 12 foot.
lead Rebecca, bumps her own rock, and winds up with the center and a corner guard. Percheski's lead Ivy comes up with a nice draw, getting about halfway behind Red's guard. Live scoring and standings are available on curlingzone.com. You can find the link if you go to our website, curldc.org, click on the Live button, click on GNCC Events, and then there are links to both the men and women's standings. Another nice shot by Team Bercheski. Lily throwing second. They're setting up almost a waterfall here, which can be very tough to get behind. Team Ely hits the top rock, but does not manage to push it out. Lily, the second for Team Bercheski, just drawing it again. Doesn't quite manage to get it behind the guard and leaves those rocks doubleable. There's about three feet of separation, so you can miss this double pretty easily. Ely going with a takeout. Sweepers are on it. Hits it on the nose. Gets one of them. 
leaves her own rock in the top 12. We'll take a look on the overhead to see if who's counting third. My, my guess would be that yellow is sitting first, second, and third, but it's tough to tell. And with seven rocks left, we know that's going to change. Chesky again with about a draw weight. She's going to bump her own rock behind the guard a little more. We have a scoring update on sheet C. Rain Anderson took one with the hammer in the fourth end. The score is now eight to one. As we take a look at the overhead cam, Percheski has four rocks in the house. Now most of them are at the T or back, so there's plenty of room for Ellie to come in and do something. With this ice, it looks like she's just going to draw in. My mistake, she's thrown a hit. She hits her own rock, just nicks Bercheski's shot rock, and leaves Bercheski sitting four in the house. The peanut gallery in the warm room is wondering if this is quadrupleable. I don't think it is, but let us know what you think. Join the chat here on the live stream. Bercheski opting for a nice draw in house draw. Almost all the way in the eight foot circle. All right, Ely's Vice, Emily here, throwing fourth rocks. She really needs to make something happen. There's a lot of yellow in that house. She comes in, takes one yellow rock out, and sits on the tee and is actually shot rock right now. So Team Ely's Red Rock is in the open, but does have a little bit of backing if Procheski decides to come and try and take it out, which I think is the call. So there is a risk of a jam here, but Procheski has such an opportunity to take lots of points that I don't think she can resist.
Ucheski coming down with a control weight. Hits the red rock through the hole, but her own rock does not stick around in the house. So she's still sitting fourth. Not a bad position to be in. Skip Hannah Ely has a tough decision to make here. Does she try and put one in behind the guards and bury it so that Jenna can't take it out? Or does she try and take Jenna's out and ro hit and roll? Looks like she's opting for the hit and roll. If she can pull this off, she can bury her own rock, and Jenna Drocheski will have no way to get it out. Emily Walker throwing fourth rocks. Sweepers are really going at it. It might be over curling. Oh, keep sweeping. It hits Vercheski's rock and rolls and keeps rolling. I think that's open enough for a hit. Let's take a look at the overhead. Ely did succeed in taking shot rock away. But I think she left her rock too open. It rolled over too far. Jenna should be able to hit and sit and take five. <coughs> Jenna Bercheski with hammer. A chance to take five. Even I can hear the call for hard sweeping. Oh! Rex on the guard and pushes a second into the house. Looking at the overhead, I think it's only one for Team Ely. Such an opportunity. Needed just a little more sweeping, folks. So Team Ely winds up with a steal of one in the fourth end. And we move on with Team Ely up four to two. Jenna encouraging her team to 
come up sweeping because they were going to collide into the red guard. Ailey's going to try and be the first one behind the guards. The ice has really started to pick up a lot of curl recently. You can see on this shot, she just got four, four and a half feet of curl. And we're still on the first day, folks. You might wind up seeing five or six feet of curl by the time we get to the finals on Sunday. I know personally, I play here in what we call our pizza league here at the Potomac Curling Club, Sunday evenings. And the days when we get seven feet of curl, those are some fun days. Jenna encouraging her sweepers to bring it all the way to the center line. And Ellie wrecks on the guard, manages to push it off to the side. It is now essentially out of play, exposing Bercheski's shot rock. Looks like we're experiencing some network congestion here. We use some wireless IP cameras here in the Potomac Curling Club, and our wireless network appears to be a little busy. We'll see if we can clean this up for the next end.
Elizabeth for Rochewski's team with a guard just over the hog line. If we take a look at the house, you can see that Team Ely is sitting 1-2 with one guard, one rock just in the 8-foot, the other barely in the 12-foot. And Team Brzeski with one rock sitting in the back of the 12-foot. Team Ely coming in with a guard, putting it right on the center line and drawing it into the house. Winding up Shot Rock. Looks like the game over on Sheet C has been called. Oh, actually, my mistake. They just finished the fifth end and are having a fifth end break. That was fascinating, folks. Berkeski, Berkeski came down, hit the red shot rock, ran it back into both red and yellow rocks in the back of the 12 foot, and I think managed to wind up shot. Let's take a look at the overhead cam. Uh, that's too close to tell, folks. Team Ely looking for a hit and roll, I think. That rock hangs out there. Hits and sits. Brzeski hits and rolls out. Emily Walker with Team Ely's Final Rock. They're going to promote the guard. Really got to sweep it. Bumps it over onto the center line and into the eight foot. Team Ely is now 1 2. Brzeski has uh, will have a chance to draw for one.
Prochesky opting for the hit and sit. They're really going to have to sweep it. Gets the hit, rolls over, and rolls out. Prochesky leaving Ely with another steal for one at the end of the fifth end. So we're going to pause a moment for the fifth end break, let our teams get back into the warm room and warmed up a little bit. It is cold out in that ice shed today. Our current score, Team Ely 5, Team Bercheski 2.
So we're back live here at the Potomac Curling Club for the GNCC Junior Playdowns. Our teams have finished their fifth end break and are beginning to get ready. Rebecca Van Ar Ooh. Rebecca Van Arsdal in the hack, coming out. bringing their rock into the house, into the 8-foot. Ivy coming down, pushing that red rock into the back of the house and leaving her own in the top 12.
Jenna Burkeski goes, sorry, Jenna Burkeski's second. Lily goes for the double, doesn't quite get it. Goes for the run back double, gets one. We have a score update on sheet C. Rain Anderson's team has conceded the game to Sarah Anderson. Sarah Anderson wins with a score at the end of the fifth end, 10 to 1. Elizabeth misses on her takeout, winds up just taking Team Ely's Red Rock in front of the other one. Rock looks a little heavy. Jenna sweeps it behind the tee, but it sticks around.
yet again. Bracheski takes one out after going for the double. So Team Ely sitting one in the house is going to attempt to put a second in to force Bracheski to draw for one. And Emily does her job, putting a second rock into play in the house. Team Ely is now sitting 1-2. Bracheski is third. Ely is fourth. Jenna Bracheski with the hammer. A nice draw with backing. Hits the red. Rolls over. Ooh, it's close. Uh, my guess is Jenna pulls it out and gets one. Yeah. Jenna's going to pull one out. Oh, they're looking at that red rock in the top eight foot. And they're asking for a measure. When in doubt, measure. A quick preview for our 4 p.m. game. At 4 o'clock, we will continue the GNCC men's junior playdowns featuring Team McMakin, which won their first game in draw one, against Team Oliver, which did not have a game in our first draw. From, we'll wait to see what the official says. And it is yellow. Jenna manages to draw for one. And the new score is five to three at the conclusion of the sixth end. Whoops, I put a five in there instead of a one. Five to three, folks. So in the seventh end, 
Team Ely is going to have the hammer, leading Bercheski by two. Ivy for Team Bercheski with a nice guard, putting it right next to the center line. Ely opting to ignore it and draw into the house. And the rock floats into the house, into the far right side of the 12-foot. Ely draws through the guards. And uh, does she stick around? Yes. Bites to the back of the 12 foot. Chesky drawing to the middle. Looks a little heavy. And Ely easily sweeps it out of the back out the back of the house. Ely with a nice draw to the T line, protecting her own in the back 12. Lily for Team Bercheski, drawing to the forefoot. Yeah. 
looks like Abigail's going to clear some guards out. Hits the guard, sticks. Oh, my goodness. Gets shot rock, but shot rock jams onto the back red. Still, that was an incredible run back, folks. If we take a look at the house, you can see that Team Ely is sitting one, Brachesky sitting two, Ely is sitting third, and Brachesky is sitting fourth. It looks like Ely is going for that fantastic run back again. With a lot of weight on it. Gets the hit. Runs it back into the yellow. And sticks around. Two fantastic run backs in a row. One for second. Abigail and one for Skip Hanna.
Team Ely is sitting five in the house right now. This is almost an exact opposite of one of the early ends where Brzezki was sitting four. Now to that end, Brzezki didn't manage to pull it out and end up giving a steal of one to Ely. We'll see if Ely can hold on. And we'll see if Brzezki can sneak a rock in there somewhere to force Ely to do something funky. Team Brzezki has called for a timeout. Their coach is now on the ice. Once again, that is Team Brzezki that has called for the timeout with their coach on the ice. So, discussions with the coach are over. Time to throw a rock. The broom is certainly lined up for the hit. Jenna Berkeski with her final rock in the seventh end. She needs to do something special here. Manages the double. Very nicely done. And I think winds up shot rock. Now it should be an easy hit for Team Ely because Brzezki's shot rock is wide in the open. So if Ely can hit and stick, she'll still take four, which will be a fantastic end, especially this late in the game. Sweepers are staying off of it. It needs to curl over if it wants to stick around. And it's going to hit. Just enough to push Brzezki's rock out. Sit and take four. Congratulations to Team Ely for that end. That makes our score nine to three at the beginning of the eighth end.
Lucheski opting to freeze. Brocheski doesn't quite make the freeze, leaving her rock exposed in the top of the forefoot. Lead Rebecca with an excellent pick out. Jenna calling for her lead Ivy to again try and freeze or bump it back a little bit. And gets the bump back. Ely with a rare miss.
a very nice guard by the Vice Elizabeth for Team Brzezinski. They left their shot rock a little exposed on the left-hand side. And the way the shoot is curling, they should be able to get to it. Sweepers are staying off of it the whole way down. Hits and rolls to the side just a little. Ely now sitting first and second shot. Percheski going to try and get a deuce with Skip's Rocks. Somehow. Jenna opting for the hit and roll tactic here. Gets the hit but doesn't get the roll she wants. Down to the final s two skips rocks. One for each team. Team Ely is calling for a draw to the button. Rock's coming in nicely. It's going to wind up behind the T-line in the back of the forefoot. Well, Emily did her job for Team Ely. Now it's time for Jenna to come down with a heavy draw and take one. Sweepers come up. They want it to curl a little bit, but I think this is going to be close enough. Oh, really close. But Jenna does her job and takes one in the eighth end to give her team an extra point. The score is 9-4, to four, Team Ely leading Team Brzezinski.
Rebecca with another excellent draw into the house. Looks like the skips are trying to decide if that rock is in or out. Skips are asking our lead official, Melissa, what the options are. Asking for a ruling on if it's in or out. I bet you about a dollar that it's still in, but a dollar ain't much. Our official Melissa walking down with a carpenter square, which will help determine whether that rock is in the house, in play, or out of play. The official has ruled that it is in play, but given where that rock is, it may or may not be in the house. This is an excellent draw into the top of the 12-foot, buried behind the top guard. Ely has no chance to take it out. She's going to clear the guard.
clears the wrong guard. Wow, fantastic shot. Unfortunately, one of the guards jammed on another yellow rock and wound up still in the house. But Ely really cleared out the yellow rocks, and all the yellow rocks in the house are now completely exposed. Rough miss for, for Skip Hannah Ely throwing third rocks. That rock just kind of hung outside.
that one yellow rock for Brzezinski has been knocked around a couple of times, but it's still shot rock. Oh, disaster. Jenna manages to hit her own rock too far on the outside, and it jams on the red rock, promoting them to shot. Emily putting in a putting a second rock into the house for Team Ely. It's probably a little deeper than she would like it because now Brzezinski has a chance to hit and roll. For those of you interested, this is a timed event. Team Brzezinski has about 17 minutes remaining, and Team Ely has 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. So both teams with a comfortable margin for the 10th end. As you can see from the overhead camera, Team Ely in red is sitting first and second shot. Team Brzezinski is sitting third shot in the back of the 12 foot. Jenna and Elizabeth really taking their time discussing the best options. They are down five. And they don't have the hammer this end. So if they manage to steal one, they'll have to steal four in the in the 10th end. So what do you think Jenna's calling for? If you think you know, put it into our comment box. Gets around the guard. and takes out Red's second shot, leaving Team Ely sitting one. 
with only the hammer left to go. Now there's not a ton of room, so it is a delicate draw for two. But Emily should be able to make this shot. And that would put Team Ely up a devastating seven points going into the tenth end. Emily Walker with Hammer for Team Ely. Sweepers come off of it. That stone's really hanging outside, folks. It's going to crash on the guard. And Team Ely will take one in the ninth end. Making the current score 10 to 4. teams taking their time during this one minute interval between ends when neither team's clock is running. Team Ely will be throwing the first rocks and they have nine minutes and 14 seconds on their clock. Team Brzezki coming over and there's the handshake folks. That's it for this game. Team Ely defeats Team Bercheski, a score of 10 to 4. Once again, this is the Potomac Curling Club here at the National Capital Curling Center in Laurel, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. You are watching the Grand National Curling Club's junior playdowns. The winners go, to go on to nationals. Our next draw will be at 4 o'clock. So if you're in the area and want to come down and watch curling live, come on down. Our address is on our website, curldc.org. Curldc.org also has the links to this web stream you're watching. So be sure to share it with family and friends because you know they want to watch curling too. And lastly, if you're a member of Potomac Curling Club, we could use your help. Sign up on the website to volunteer for this event. You can webcast. You can be a timer. You can come out and help with the ice. We need your help to make help make this a successful event. Thank you to all 62 people currently watching at the end of our of draw number two. I'll see you at four o'clock Eastern time.